All right, I'm sorry, I was muted. Salam alaikum, how you doing, Noor? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Good, how are you? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Wow. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy Sabbath. I'm in um, seven dislikes because of this number 19 thing. Wow. Yeah, I hope this is not coming from the Rashid people. I mean, it's crazy. You got to even give it a chance to hear the information before you give it a thumbs down. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you don't, I don't know. I don't know who it's coming from. Yeah. It, well, inshallah, we hear the, we hear the information and then go from there. You can't just uh, thumbs down, just dis dismiss something before you even get a chance to hear it. So, the, yeah. I sure would like to hear from the folks who are giving it a thumbs down and haven't even heard it. So, you say we had seven thumbs down? God, I can't see it. How many we got now? Hold yeah, on, hold seven. on, hold on. You got it. You got to. Oh, hold up. Yeah, you got to. Okay. Yeah, I had to look. Oh, uh, seven. Oh, five up, seven now. Yeah, I mean, I don't care. Nothing. I don't care nothing about that. But it's, you know, well, this can. This is actually gonna boomerang into what I'm gonna talk about today, because some of those thumbs down, you know, this this number right here, this 19, is supposed to be the Quran is gonna utilize this 19 to bring people to the truth and lead people astray. So those thumbs down might that, that might be a testimony. Mm. We're gonna talk about after I'm done, we're going to talk about those thumbs down. We're going to connect it with the number 19 also. Beautiful. All right. We'll probably, we'll probably have more thumbs down. All right. By the end. All right. All right. So I could be heard and everything. All righty. So I'll go back and forth. We'll go back and forth. I'll do a little bit. We'll go back and forth. All right. Let me get started with the lecture. We're going to talk about the number 19. Let me share my screen. I got it up. All right. First of all, no one has a monopoly on the number 19. Nobody has a monopoly. The number 19 is spoken about in the Quran, and I'm going to be the one is going to kind of cross reference. I'm, I'm going to give you some, some new information. Um, I know the Quranists, so called Quranists, I don't like saying Quranists, but some of the Khalifa people. Um, I know he was a pioneer in the number 19. Um, but we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about him as well. But we're going we're gonna to get into what the Quran says this number is supposed to do. All right. So first, let's look at it. All right, number 19. I will roast him in No, could you could you um to, to spice it up a little bit? Could you read it? Can you see the screen? Okay. Spice. It. Spice. It okay. Up. All right, so Quran chapter 74 uh Verse 26, I will roast him in Sakar. Mm -hmm. But what will explain to you what Sakar is? Mm -hmm. It neither leaves nor spares. It scorches the flesh. Over it are 19. All right. Over it is 19. All right, let's look at Sakar. In Hebrew and Aramaic, look at that. All right. Sakar so means seductive to look. I know we can't. Uh, I need to hide this. Okay, boom. I got it. Look at in Aramaic. Look about. So this word is also in Hebrew and Aramaic to look at. 
to the eye with with a with the eye of envy, hatred. All right, the evil eye. Now, the nineteenth letter of Aramaic and Hebrew, quaff. All right, the meaning is the eye of a needle, like an eye, eye of a needle. So we got the nineteenth letter of the Hebrew and the nineteenth letter of Aramaic, Aseretic, coincided with with the type of eye. All right, Matthew twenty four twenty three. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly, I will tell you, it is hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I will tell you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. The evil eye against your poor brother, having an evil eye. If you're rich and you don't give to the poor, you have an evil eye against your poor brother. Um, that's in the Torah. It doesn't say evil eye, but. You know, if you are rich and you don't help out your brother, it is it is a type of, you know, neglect or evil towards your brother. You're supposed to help your brother out. All right. So we got the 19th letter coinciding with that, with the actual word. So quar. over it are 19. So we have 19. All right, read for me. Let's keep going. 19, 2 is a, well, before you read, 19 is going to have a twofold purpose. We're going to look at this twofold fold purpose of the number 19. Let's go. Okay. And we have set none but angels as guardians of the fire. And we have fixed their number only as a trial for unbelievers. In order that the people of the book may arrive at certainty and the believers may increase in faith. And that no doubts may be left for the people of the book and the believers, and that those in whose hearts is a disease and the unbelievers may say, What symbol doth Allah attend, intend by this? Thus doth Allah leave to astray whom he pleaseth and guide whom he pleaseth. And none can know the forces of thy Lord except he, and this is no other than a warning to mankind pause it don't read that last part pause it all right we'll go deal with that last part later all right so the number 19 and to the hebrews that think the quran does not prophesy things the quran does more than prophesy the quran is like it has twofold meanings it's like it has mystery in it this number, the Most High is going to use this number right here. This is this is a prophecy. He's going to, the Creator is going to use this number to lead people astray, to deal with three different type of people. The people of the book, the disbelievers, well, yeah, disbelievers, four types of people. People of the book, four types. People of the book, disbelievers, um, believers, and hypocrites. So these four people are going to look at this number right here in different ways all right and he's going to use this number to thus does allah lead lead to stray whom he pleases and guide whom he pleases so he's going to use this number as a guidance and lead astray and by the end of this lecture this is good this is going to be good i feel actually feel really good this is going to be a good one end of this lecture the people of the book inshallah is going to be strengthened in faith. Number 19 is going to be used to lead people to the fire and to lead people to heaven. 19. Let's do it. What is 19 supposed to do? I broke down the verse for the but we're gonna start on the right. For the believers, believers may be increased in faith with this number. So um, where they have no doubts, believers leave with no doubts. For the unbelievers, we have fixed their number only as a trial for the unbelievers. So the unbelievers, this is going to be a trial for them. It's going to be a test. For the hypocrite, are they going to take this number and go too deep or be led astray because of it? Hypocrites, and that those in whose hearts is a disease and the unbelievers may say, what symbol does Allah intend by this? So here's the number 19. Let's look at it. 
All right, let me see. Uh, where to get it at? No, I'm gonna come back to that. Well, yeah, yeah, no. this is the next group. People of the book, the Negroes. The people of the book are another way of saying Israelites. All right, we don't know what tribe we come from. We went into slavery. We all mixed up with each other. Levites probably married Judites. Judites married Benjamites. So we're called the people of the scriptures. So for the people of the book, this number is going to be used in order that the people of the book may arrive at certainty. And the believers may increase the faith and that no doubt may be left for the people of the book and the believers. So this number for the people of the book is supposed to help us have certainty of our faith. It's going to be proof to help the people of the book arrive because the people of the book had to go through all these stages. We didn't listen. We threw the book away behind our backs. We threw the book behind our backs and we said, we go, we don't need no, we don't need no scriptures. We're going to do this voodoo. We're going to deal with these spirits. We're going to, even during Jeremiah's time, we're going to go into Egypt. We're going to go into Africa. We, when we migrated into Africa, went into Africa, we lost our information. So we had to go, we had to go, the, we had to go the long route. We were hard headed. So we went through, to, through Africa, through the trees, lost all our scriptures. And the Most High sent the Arab, the pale Arab, and the white man to put us in slave ships, put us on a boat, take us to America. We went the long route. We had to work. And the white man gave us back our book. So we got it back. All right. He found it somewhere in the cave and translated it into Greek and then translated it into English. Protestant Reformation. Boom. Gave it back to us. The same books that we tried to run away from and throw away. We got them. We got them back. All right. And now we're here. We got to arrive. Now we're here and we have believers. We have Muslim people of the book. And we they, they have to come to, they have to come to a certainty. They have to come, they gotta come to a point where they have no doubt. So this number 19 is gonna increase the people of the book. Cause we, we're here, we have arrived, we almost arrived. And this 19, this number right here is gonna make us really, really believe. All right, we'll get it to it. Let me get, let me hear it, let me hear it. All right, for the disbelievers. All right, disbelievers and hypocrites. Here's a group that was transformed by the number 19. The ba Baha community. All right, this is a, 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 this is a group that came from Iran. They're like the ninth largest religion in the world. And they came from Iran around the 1800s. And um, they use the 19 every 19 days. And then they come from the Shia um, group. They broke off and kind of started a whole other religion. They got like a um, mess uh, messenger that they say came. But um, it's not a legit messenger because I looked at some of the work. And some of the work contradicts the Quran. So that's not a legit messenger. So this community... Every 19 days, they come to meet, and they have a feast every 19 days. They set up their calendar based off 19. They have 19 months in their calendar. They meet every 19 days. And this is a quote um, from their one of their messengers. If this feast be held in the proper fashion, the friends, the friends will, once in 19 days, find themselves spiritually restored and endued with a power that is not of this world. All right. So they meet every 19 days. They set up their calendar in 19. All of that, all of that, all of that. Allah says 12. He set up the months. There's 12 months in a year. Four of them are sacred. This, and that's your religion. So if they don't set up their religion based off 12 months with four sacred, then they have lost their religion. So this 19 right here has led these people astray, this community astray. They have about, it's about 7 million of them all over the world. And this 19 has led them astray. 
All right. Let's look at the Khalifa Rashid group, code 19. Ooh. I hope those dislikes didn't come from y'all. All right. So this group right here, what spawned from this group was, was, was good things and bad things. 19. The good things is you had a lot of Quranist groups that denied the Hadiths and wanted to focus more on the Quran. Can't, you know, a lot of Quranists came from this group. That's a good thing. So that the believers that increased them in faith in Quran alone. But for others, the 19 made the disbelievers stumble because Mr. Khalifa wanted to remove um, Surah 9, Ayat 20, 1, 28, 129. And that you can't you can't take out ayats. You can't take out a, a, ayat, a surah and a ayats out of the Quran. That makes you a hypocrite. All right. So the code 19 is debated. They they debated that they think it's false. They think it's manipulated. That he changed some words around to make the code work in the computer. But what we know is that we know that he tried to remove some ayats. And that is manipulating. All right. So, um, I mean, my that's just my opinion. My opinion, that was a negative. All right. So, you see how the number 19, you see what it did. It, it was good and it was bad. All right. All right, Khalifa Rashid, false claims of being the messenger of the covenant in the book of Malachi. False claims. In the book of Malachi, the messenger of the covenant, the covenant deals with Israel. Khalifa was not an Israelite. He did not purify the Levites. He did not do any sacrifices like the messenger of the covenant was supposed to do. The messenger of the covenant in the book of Malachi is supposed to do sacrifices and purge the Levites and Israelites. Khalifa is not an Israelite. How can he be a messenger of the covenant? Messenger of the covenant, that means you coming to bring back the covenant. Where's his calendar? There's no calendar. So Khalifa, I don't think he really knew the Bible like that. I don't think he knew what messenger of the covenant really meant. He just used it because it was convenient. But some of the work is pretty good, but he, you got to fulfill what the scriptures say if it says the message of covenant is going to do this one two three four then you have to fulfill that um that part all right you can't just call yourself that you got to come with you got to come with the covenant for israel all right all right could you read that again one more time yes all right, <clears throat> 7431, and we have set none but angels as guardians of the fire, and we have fixed their number only as a trial for unbelievers, in order that the people of the book may arrive at certainty, and the believers may increase in faith, and that no doubts may be left for the people of the book and the believers, and that those in whose hearts is a disease and the unbelievers may say, what symbol doth Allah intend by this? Thus doth, doth Allah leave to stray whom he pleaseth, and guide whom he pleaseth. And none can know the forces of thy Lord except he, and this is no other than a warning to mankind. Now, pause for a minute. Read 32. Nay, ver verily by the moon. Boom. The Quran did this on purpose. Right after it talked about the number 19, it's going to say, read it again, 32. It's going to say what? Nay, verily by the moon. Mm. Why did it say by the moon? It said by the moon because, let's look at it. One more time. <laughs> Nay, verily by the moon, which because is so the, profound that it came right after that verse. It came right after that verse. You know why? The moon has a 19-year cycle. There's a 19-year moon cycle. That's why I said it after that. 19-year moon cycle. All right? 
And I thought I was the first one to figure that out, but I looked, I looked it up, and the Greeks, the Greeks knew about it. Um, in Athens, they knew about it. I forgot the guy's name, but the Greeks got it from the Babylonians. All right, so yeah. I, I wasn't the first one to figure that out. The Greeks already had it. All right, so there's a night. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, you got it. Go ahead. This is what solidified the Ramadan for me. The, the, mm. the, this is what solidified that Ramadan shouldn't be moving for me. Mm. Listen, listen, you're the people of the book, so it's supposed to make you have certainty. Yeah. What, what is it supposed to do? Certainty. And it's supposed to, what else does it say? What else is it supposed to have? Certainty. Certainty. You're supposed to, you're supposed to arrive. And right? Arrive. I, yeah, certainty, certainty and arrive. And that, that's what made me have certainty and arrive to this understanding like, whoa, 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 whoa. Ramadan shouldn't be floating. We shouldn't be following that moon because it has a 19 year cycle. <laughs> so yeah, the, sun, the sun has a one year cycle. Right, right. The sun right. has a one year cycle. Right. And we're going to explain, I'm going to explain what that means. All right. The, the sun has a one year cycle. And let me tell you something else. I know the Greeks didn't get to this one. There's other cycles. There's a Jupiter cycle, but we're not going to get into it. There's a Mercury cycle. There's a Venus cycle. All right. All those planets have cycles. But I hope the Greeks didn't figure that out or the Babylonians because I want that. One. I want to figure some out and I want to bring out something new. Here we go. Uh, but I didn't know. I didn't know the Greeks had it. I didn't know. So 19 year cycle. We'll focus on the moon today. 19 year cycle. What does that mean? All right. It's called the what is it called? Metatonic, metatonic cycle. You could look that up. 19, you could look that up. The Greeks got it from the Babylonians. Metatonic cycle, a period of 19 years after which the new moon and the full moons return to the same, same days of the year. That means if the moon is in, is, is in a certain spot, if you look up in the sky and you see the moon in a certain spot, it's going to take 19 years. All right. That same day, if it's a Monday, and I'm going to show you some examples. If it's a Monday and the, and the moon is in a certain spot on a Monday, then in 19 years, you should see the moon on a Monday in that same spot in the sky. All right. And I'm going to show you some examples. It'll be in that same spot, 19 year moon cycle. You want to say anything about that before I move on? Nora? No, I'm that. Hey, dead on. Oh. Let's keep, let's do it. Let's do it. So that's the number 19. Here we go. Let's do it. Alhamdulillah. Now, chapter 19. Ooh. Miriam. Chapter 19 deals with Mary. Chapter 19 of the Quran. 1919 deals with a birth. It deals with a birth. Could you read that and tell us who's being born? He said, I am, uh, Ch Quran chapter 19, verse 19. He said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you the gift of a pure son. Who is that talking about? Isa, peace be upon him. So this is the birth of Isa in 1919. And we're talking about Miriam. We talk about Miriam and Mary and Isa in the Quran. They're supposed to be, they're supposed to be a sign. They made them a sign for mankind. They're a sign. All right. All right. Let's look at this. Don't forget, Miriam, Isa. Oh, we're just going to say Isa. Revelation 12, one. read that, please. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. All right, this is another birth. Another birth in the book of Revelations. It deals with the moon. It deals with a sign in heaven. All right. And we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me look at it. Let me go look at it. Let me see where I want to go. Let me see. I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there yet. Yep, I want to go there. 
Now, this sign happens in the sky. Virgo, Virgo has, I'm going to show you the 12 stars on Virgo's crown, on Virgo's head. I'm going to show you the moon under her feet. And this happens during the Feast of Tabernacle. And it happens every 19 years. It happened 96 AD. That's when the book of Revelations were it was revealed. So John actually probably saw it in the sky. In 96 AD, the book of Revelation was revealed, and this sign was in the sky. All right. You could download the app. I'll give you the app and you can I'll show you. All right. In one AD. In one AD. The Romans say that Jesus was born. That's what the Romans say. They said they did a calculation and all that. They looked at some old books and said Jesus was born in 1 AD. That sign was in the sky. 1888, during the Feast of Tabernacle, the woman, every 19 years, you will see Virgo in the sky with the moon under the feet, with the crown and the sun, clothed, her being clothed with the sun. 2021, this sign will be in the sky again this year. Um, next week, next week, that sign will be in the sky. You can you can see it in the sky. You'll see the woman, the moon on her feet with the crown. It won't happen again until 2040. Then it'll happen again to, in 2059. It happens every 19 years. All right, let me show you. It happens every 19 years. Here we go. 96 AD, this is how the sky looked. In 96 AD, I'll show you. I got an app. 96, you got the sun. Virgo is clothed with the sun and the moon under Virgo's feet. And I'll show you the stars. I'll show you the stars. This is when John received the book of Revelations and he, he saw the sign. All right. 96 AD. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, sound like him. Um, this right here that we're looking at is is that woman with the 12 stars with, with the crown and the 12 stars correct correct yes. can you can you slow down and point that out for uh, point that out for us because <laughs> this what? is deep too this is deep what do you want me to point out well i'm just saying for for folks who aren't yeah yes yeah, like you like want, that. You, want go, you want us to go back to read it again or you you good well um we don't have to go back to the verse but can you break it down like where you sh where with the moon and the stars under the feet because okay. i know when i first seen that you know for folks who aren't you who are right. used to looking at the woman um, is virgo okay the woman is virgo does she's clothed with the sun and she has the moon under her feet this only happens in a 19 year cycle Okay, it happened 96 AD. That's when the book of Revelations was revealed. You can look that up. Night, I mean, I'm sorry, 96 AD. All right, so every 19 years, this happens. All right, every and, 19 years. And can I say something really quick? Go ahead. Um, I think this topic is profound. And so um, I'm gonna show you the stars, I'm gonna go deep. Um, but I would be like him in the shaitan regime because the shaitan is in the room and it's causing fitna. Oh, what happened? Um, I can't see, I can't see. Yeah, you can't see, but um, I, I think what needs to happen, ignore, ignore. It's all good. I, you well, I don't, the reason the only, I, I was ignoring, and the reason why I stopped is because. The the I would be lie is is preventing other folks from being able to really like see what it is that 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 inshallah you've you've studied this for years you know this isn't just some fly by the night yeah. so brother I, uh brother um Are they talk about Rashid and all this stuff <laughs> right 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 no one I would be lying to shade Titan regime no one is meaning any disrespect um about uh, Rashad Khalifa it's not about Rashad Khalifa. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh huh. Tell them we we will address. Let me finish this, and then we. Yes. Will, I, I can't see the chat, so they. Just, that's that's the only thing that I want. Yeah. That's the only thing that I want to say. I'm not gonna like get into it or anything like that. I would just say, before you go into this massive 
attacking and trying to get folks from not even being able to see what's going on. Just calm down for a minute and then let, let the brother finish what, the presentation. And then from there, if you want to come on and say whatever you need to say or address what you need to address, then by all means, this is not yeah, a, a platform for debating or arguing or, yeah. or, 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 I'm, a, hold on, hold on. I'm almost Listen, whoever I can't see in the chat, so yeah, I can see. Like, that's why. No, 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 I just, listen, listen, I'm talking to them. Okay, I can't see you in the chat, so I'm almost done. When I'm done, then put what you need to put in the chat, and we'll address it. We'll talk about that messenger of the covenant. All right, because I have questions. You got to fulfill. You got to fulfill what the scriptures say. And no one, no one is denying the miracle the mathematical miracle of the number 19. No one is denying that. No, I mean, this, this, I mean, will it, this, I'm just telling them, let, just let me finish. Yes. Yeah. They just need to let me finish. It's not, Thank it's not you. a deal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right. So, uh, where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Okay. All right. So, moon under her feet. This is the season of the Feast of Tabernacle. Now, every Feast of Tabernacle, the moon is not under her feet, but every Feast of Tabernacle, she's clothed with the sun and she has a crown. All right. Every Feast of Tabernacle. So during the Feast of Tabernacle, you look up in the sky, you will see her, the Virgo clothed with the sun. But every 19 years, the moon is on her feet every 19 years. All right. 96 AD. That's when the book of Revelations was revealed. All right. You got 2040. It's going to happen. You got 1964. It's going to happen. All right. The crown, the 12 stars. Let's look closely. Here are the 12 stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is, this is, this is her head right here. And this is the 12. This is the crown. All right. This is the crown overhead. Um, you can you can turn it into a crown if you want to do dot to dot like that and it'll look like a crown. Or you can make it like an Afro crown. Or you can make it like a crown crown. But you got the 12 stars right here. All right. And I have the 12 stars listed if you want to look them up. These are the names of the two. I could I had I couldn't there's no symbol that you know there's no I couldn't make a, a O with a line through it. I couldn't make an O with a line through it. So I had to put O with the tail symbol. Some of these, you know, I, I didn't, there's no someone on my keyboard for it. All right. Also, uh, to a Nazarene, your hair is a crown. But these are the 12 stars by name. If you want to go look them up, that's over Virgo. All right. So I'm almost done. So the Feast of Tabernacle this year is October the 4th through the 10th. We dwell in boots. 2001, you will see the sign in the sky with the moon on her feet. All right. A new moon is October the 6th, 2021, uh, marking the new season of fall. Um, yeah. I told you I was almost done. Any questions? No, you got any questions? Um, I wanted them like I wanted them to actually see how the cycle works, the nineteen year cycle, and the nineteen year cycle is deeper. I could do a part two. It's deeper. I, I held off on a lot of stuff. All right, because I don't know if we we're ready for all that. I held off on a lot of stuff. All right, you had a question? Um, no. Um, it pretty self explanatory. Part one was pretty self explanatory. Um, but like you said, the nineteen. The number 19 goes even deeper um, than, yes. that, than, than that. Um, like you said, when you're going to part two. Um, yeah, some um, stuff I'm some stuff I'm hold, I hold back for the, you know, for the ones that's closest. <laughs> but go ahead. Yeah. I, I think some people, I don't think they're ready for all that. But yeah. All right, what we got? Oh, the chat is going crazy. Let's see, Salon, man. But you was about to say something? No, go ahead. Salam do 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 do. Press the you right now. Right, right, she you now. 
Okay. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about this this 19. It's Rashid stuff, right? Let's talk about brother brother Rashid. Obadiah. Uh, was he the messenger of the covenant? My question to you. Obadiah, was he the messenger of the covenant? Did he claim to be the messenger of the covenant? In the book of Revelations. Now I'm not I'm not against I'm not against him claiming to be a messenger, but you if you claim to be a messenger, you need to fulfill the prophecy. If you claim to be the messenger of the covenant, you it's very simple. There's no feelings involved. If you fulfill it, then that's that's it is what it is. He said he was a messenger of the covenant in the book of Malachi. I don't hear, I don't see anybody saying anything. <laughs> Go ahead, leave it. Well, I guess no, I guess he's any, 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 any Rashid followers. Okay. He said, it's me. Okay. You said no. So he's not the message of the covenant. But he did. Yeah. Come to the covenant. Yeah. That, that's uh, the brother Obadiah, which I, he's been in a few of the um, Sabbath, um, you know, the, the Sabbath sessions. Um but it's, I guess this here was a trigger for him. I mean, he was caught, you know, kind of going a little off off target here with with some of the things he's saying. But I guess, I don't know, maybe he left the room because now I'm noticing he's not saying anything or putting out any text. And, you know, we're, you know, one thing that I respect about this brother right here is that he's not anti against anything that someone has to say you know it's all about going into the text looking at the scripture and and everybody digging in and coming up with the truth but when we're talking about removing an ayat or a verse from the quran um you know that's that's a totally that's a something that's totally different that's a totally different story so um you know, yeah, but, nobody's yeah. going down that road. Yeah, we listen, we, we, we're believers. And like, you know, if you say brother was a messenger, we take that serious. Yeah, we don't believe in disrespecting messengers. Yeah, we take that very serious. If, if you're a messenger, we need to sit down and talk. I mean, we take that serious. We're supposed to believe in messengers. You but, know? Take, but, but, the, but taking uh, ayats out, Qurans? <laughs> now, it, it seemed like there was good that came from it. Yes. Like I said the Quran alone stuff was good, but mm -hmm. the nineteen leads us straight and it and it um increases faith. It does all of that. It does all of that. Peace, my right. Salam, salam. Alaikum salam, rahmatullah. How's brothers and sisters doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, brother? Doing pretty good. I'm the You know about the yeah. night. I don't, I, know. I don't want to sound like I'm picking. I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying. Yeah, um, it was probably about three years ago. I, I read some things on the number 19. Um, yeah. And it was sounding good. It was looking good until, you know, Rashid Khalifa, <laughs> he said two ayats was to be taken out because they're not ayats. Yeah, you can't do that. Can't do that. So I was like, nope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nope. You can't do that. Can't do that. You can, you know, your mathematical calculations got to match the whole book. Is that you can't say? Okay, well, you know, these two right because they don't calculate all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and take these two eyes out. So it don't work to, like that. You tried to force it. Yeah, can't do that. You try to. Yeah, you and can't. Then, force it. And you made a good point. He's not banning Israel either. That's exactly. Right. So, I mean. That that for the main part that that completely X's that out, right? Exactly. But yeah, right. you can't take you can't take eyes from the Quran. Exactly. But here's what I will say is that um, you know, some people when they started reading the material that he was breaking down, 
um, they had it in their head that maybe the Quran alone concept didn't exist before him. In actuality, the Quran alone existed way before him. He was oh. just a real out. He was just really an outspoken person who challenged the dominant Sunni and uh, Shia trend. So that's why he got catapulted so high. Wow. You know, because he, he, he nobody else is really doing it because they know, you know, people that reject Hadith books and stuff like that, uh, especially when they follow the Saudi uh, understanding, you know, they'll they'll uh, they'll kill you. Correct. You know? So Correct. a lot a lot don't come out and say that type of stuff. But he was bold with it. He was like, forget it. And um, part of that had something to do with because there was um. There was a bunch of uh, Egyptian scholars that that were Quran alone in the University of Al Azhar, so they got persecuted and kicked up out the colleges and stuff like that, out the universities. And so, you know, he was one of the people that went ahead and stepped forward, like I don't care about that. Let me go ahead and put go to the forefront with it. You know, and eventually, I mean, he didn't. You know, at first they wasn't really trying to do nothing to him until. Really, he he uttered those statements about the Quran. Yeah, he took two ayats saying that they ain't Quran, and so that made the other groups, the Sunni, the Sunnis, and all them, you know, some of the Salafis or whatever you want to call it, you know, it made them uh, feel the justification to be able to assassinate him. Right. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That that was he. That was a no no right there. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, Quran alone been in Nigeria and Egypt way before him. That's a good yeah. point. That's yeah. so he's not the originator. That's a good point. No, Both no, he's not the originator. No, uh, uh, people that's ignorant, they think that he's the originator. Because I've had a few people when I was telling them about uh, going against the Hadith books, and they was like, oh, you're a Rashid Khalifa person. I said, no, brother. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not a Rashid Khalifa person. I wow. said, Quran alone. I said, you got... um." What was his name? Full name? Bibi Hani. There, that was a uh, Sunni scholar in the eighth century, and he used to have debates against Quran alone. He even issued a fatwa against mm -hmm. Quran alone. Said anybody that says, uh, if you go to a person and you quote a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, you know, because they call it a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, we don't believe it, right? But mm -hmm. hadith of the Messenger of Allah, uh, and he says that he don't want to hear it, that he only wants to hear the Quran. He said, get up and leave this heretic alone. For he's following mm. the path of those of his predecessors that came before him. So mm. they, I mean, Quran alone is if you want to trace it even through some of the Salafi uh scholars, you know, the, the old Salafi scholars, all the way going back basically to the eighth century to the Al Hadith period, it's there mm -hmm. in, in the format of uh them debating or arguing or making fatwas against it. You know, wow. so you got a lot of the Salafi communities that are say, well, it's a new invention. It's a modern age thing in the 21st century and the West made it up. And I'm just look, looking at that like, no, you got to be honest. See, when you debate people or when you are opposed to people's beliefs or understandings, you have to be honest about, you know, those people, too. You mm -hmm. know, because what ends up happening is if you lie. And people find out you lied, that that will discredit your viewpoint. And he, you might actually end up making converts out of, you know, uh, the people that you was, you know, trying to keep away from going to that viewpoint because they find out you lied. And then what else you lie about? Right. Right. You know? So it's really it's really a it's a good practice to I mean, yeah, you might disagree with a certain viewpoint, but to the best of your knowledge, you should be honest against, you know, what it is when they started. You know, uh, and how they came about because if somebody finds that out and that's your foundational argument against them, and they find out that that's wrong, they're like, "Well, shoot, why'd you lie? There must be a, they must have some legitimacy, <laughs> you know, they must have some legitimacy about them, you know." But yeah, that's all I want to say is, um, yeah, taking out two eyes of the Quran, that's just uh, through a mathematical calculation and computation. Which is what a, a unique thing that basically he it's not unique in history, but I'm saying it's unique as far as how he presented it, utilizing the Quran with it, you know. Right. So the Torah has uh, been used that way too, I think. Yeah, they got a code yeah, in exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Um our other books, 
the Torah and other books, you know, you can find mathematical calculations and codes in it. Yeah. So yeah. it's not the first time. Um, but yeah, with the Quran and how he did it, his specific way, that was the first time, especially taking out the eyes like that. Yeah, that's yeah. all I got to say. Well, I mean, I, I think I was I was being pretty nice. I was giving him some props, and but you know, right, I right. Gotta, I, I mean, yeah, he, I gotta give him props. He was bold. He stepped forward. You know, he um he challenged Sunnis. I mean, he got debates online. <laughs> he had this one Sunni dude like, you know, just on the ropes stuck. You know, so I mean, you got it. You give the you. It's like what you say. You give the good, and then you give the criticism too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, and that's yeah. just called that's just called being fair. Somebody disagree with it, you don't gotta call people uh your curse from Allah. And you, you're a cowby, your dog, anta anta cowby, and all that. Your dogs and all oh, that no. stuff. <laughs> just come on the live, just like I'm on the live, and speak your piece. Right, and the crazy. This is I the crazy. <laughs> hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Salam alaikum, Kareem. I didn't want to speak. Wa alaikum salam. Okay. I didn't want to speak. Alaykum. Salam alaikum, brother. Salam. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing, like, you know, to the brother, like, you know, you can't be coming with people trying to, you know, share information and you just come being disrespectful, talking about people are cursed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because people can say stuff about you, too. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. if you disagree, dis disagree in a respectful way and just present your arguments. I mean, see, you see what happened to your man. He got <laughs> murdered. Yeah, right. see, you want to handle it that way? People can say something. I could have said your mom is a cursed soul. Right. I mean, we anybody could say anything online. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. just be respectful. Right. You ain't got to disrespect nobody. How are you gonna come online and call somebody a curse? <laughs> right. Like, right. what are you what are you talking about, man? That's Cursed the dog. unbecoming of a Muslim. Yeah, like what are you talking yeah, right. about? You just can't talk about people like that. So that's it. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to say. Yeah. Go ahead, Noah. The funny thing about that whole thing, I don't know, man. Like I say, like really after getting really deep into, like really starting to get deeper and deeper into the scriptures, really getting into like finding this this here miracle with the number nineteen. Mm -hmm. Um, it <clears throat> when you see things like that where people are calling you a cursed dog and so on and so forth, it really is almost kind of like a kindergarten. I'm, I'm not trying to be rude or funny or anything <laughs> like that. But it's almost kind of like a kindergartner calling you and calling you and a cursed dog. It kind of like, all right, shoe fly, don't bother me. Um, <laughs> because what you're really trying to get folks to understand is like, man, it's bigger and deeper than you can even ever imagine. A long That's is right. like like the, the amount of wisdom and, and knowledge that's out there, we haven't even touched the surface. Mm. It's yeah, bigger man. than one man. It's bigger than one group. It's yeah, bigger right. than all of that's that. Right. Like right. we're like even that image that um brother Mamma showed on the uh, in the beginning of the when you before you go in when he showed the hand and how that they're how they're the 19 the joints crazy. on the hand. Mm. Mm. Do, do, do crazy. you see how beautiful Allah is? Mm -hmm. You you see how beautiful Allah is, how mathematically perfect Allah is. And Allah is so perfect, his words don't need to be deleted. Mm -mm. Nope. Because just as quick as there, just as quick as the brother found that miracle with that 19 with those hands, I'm sure there are other miracles that the brother um found probably in the in this in the second phase. There, I'm sure there are other miracles that we haven't even began to touch the surface of. I mean, the 19, so, the 19, I'm sorry, the 19 in the hand, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you talk. Uh, the 19 in the hand, that right there can make strength in people's faith. That's what the Quran said it was supposed to do. Go ahead, Noah. Yeah. Well, hey, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even realize. Like, when I seen the image of the hand with the 19, that further solidified for me and again, maybe because I'm Benny Israel, I don't know. I mean, but again, I, I, I you know, I love Muslims. You know, some Muslims aren't Benny Israel. And inshallah, those Muslims who aren't Benny Israel get it as well. But mm -hmm. when I see the 19 of the hand, and then I'm seeing this 19 of the moon cycle, I mean, Allah sends clear signs for those who would reflect. Clear signs, yes, on the love. 
Yeah. Yeah, you got to, you don't got to, I mean, there's deep levels to everything, you know? So, yeah, you got to dig, but like, like YouTube is letting it be known, clear signs. It's real, it's real simple, it's real clear, but it's deep, it has lots of depth to it. Yep. You, know? you ain't got to force it, you don't got to push it, you know? <laughs> you just, just, hey, the calculation will go smooth, but I, I hope, I hope to hear when you really go deep, brother. <laughs> right. I think the ones that be in here consistently, consistently are ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, so do we have any questions in the chat? I'm going to go through the chat and see what we got. What we got? The Roman, the Prophecy, Ishmael, the Prophecy. That's another broadcast, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Whole other broadcast is pretty well. Separate wheat from the shell. Oh, it is pretty well the separation. Of the wheat from the shaft, number 19. Yep, now he was listening. Right, we're not gonna put anything about Obadiah on here. Good, good, good. All right, so basically, that's it. But again, again, y'all, um, we're not trying to beat up. I don't even want to say Quran alone because me personally, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was Quran alone. <laughs> All right. Yeah. 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 So, um, but yeah, the Rashid people were not beating up on the Rashid people. I mean, I would really like, you know, could make some kind of alliance, you know, um, alliance, you know. I didn't think it was, I don't think I, bad. I don't think bad of them at all, you know. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, like, you know, it was a sister in the Facebook, and she and I were going back and forth for a while, like, talking and communicating, and, um, you know, she brought up the brother, the brother Rashad Khalifa, and I <clears throat> went, and I said, oh, okay, cool, 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 and I went and did the research on the brother, and I was like, yeah, that's cool that, he, you know, he brought to the forefront in the West um, with the with the uh, Quran alone, staying away from those hadiths. Um, but again, <clears throat> when I hear about anybody, I don't care who you are, you're taking eye outside the Quran, boom, okay, that's all I need to hear. Right. <laughs> I don't need to hear anymore. I don't care yeah. who you are. That's right. Right. Exactly. Right, there's a YouTube channel called The Warner, and he has three videos called RKS Fake 19 Code. I'm not saying mm. it's wrong, but it's very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm open... Yeah, I mean, they were they trying to cover up the truth and stuff. I mean, if, if he made a mistake, he just made a mistake. It's not a problem. We just move on. Right. Huh? Can't be scared to be critiqued. That's like, you know, that's a little courtish. If you're scared mm -hmm. to be critiqued. Indeed, yeah. Let me see. Be careful. Like, I had somebody, uh, and one time I did, it's like, somebody get, <laughs> maybe he's like, I said, well, Prophet Muhammad, he's like, Prophet Muhammad's Ishmaelite. I said, uh, Prophet Muhammad is an Arab. I said, uh, I said, but he was an Israelite Arab. I said, he had Ishmaelite blood in him. No, 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 no. I mm. said, he's like, he's just an Ishmaelite. I said, well, if you believe that that area was only composed of just Is Ishmaelites only. And that would make sense. That would make sense. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, you know, that, <laughs> that, that mug has a long history of invasions. Right. You know, you got the, for example, you got uh, the Bantus who traveled from, from, you know what I'm saying? The Israelites who traveled up from Israel into that part of Africa and they went into Yemen. The southern part of Yemen, the southern Arabia, which is Yemen. And then if you look inside the Quran where it talk about uh, the dam of Saba, when the dam broke, if anybody knows that history, then you know that those who were in Yemen, they migrated down into Northern Arabia. Mm -hmm. You know, and then uh, even in 
to historical narrations, you know, not not taking it as Dean, but just simply just some uh, secondary history, you know, uh, it mentions that, you know, those, the Qureshi were of those Yemeni tribes that went down there. You know, you look at uh, Prophet Muhammad's ancestry, first, you know, that there's several lists for his ancestry and, you know, there's a lot of doubt, like, does it go back to add from Adnan on up, mm. all the way back to Kusay, or does he end up at Ishmael, or, you know what I'm saying, you look at um, his mother's side of the family that go into Medina, and, you know, you find out that they were a Bani Najar, and those were Israelite tribes, mm. you know? So, I mean, you got, you got, you got to uh, understand, well, all of us got to understand is that, you know, there's a mixed lineage there, you know? Yeah. And even on the father's side, I, I uh, forget exactly. I got to look at my old reference because I have old references. But uh, the paternal side also goes back to, I believe, the Suleiman tribe. Hmm. But I'm not too sure about that. And the Suleiman tribe were, no, were a known Israelite tribe, too. So hmm. there's a, within even their hadiths, even in the hadiths that people pick and chose, they try, they, they try to uh, put it together, say, oh, no, he's from Ishmael. You know, adding and going back to Ishmael, but then you got other hadiths that say that if anybody tell you that um that uh I, the genealogy is traced back past Adam, know that he's a liar. So I mean, you know, you got yeah. a whole bunch of you know ands if what ifs. See, so um really, who do we rely on when we when we hear about Prophet Muhammad as far as ancestry? If we think about it, we hear from the uh, Yiddish Jews, we hear from the Edomite Arabs, the later the later Arabs that came in. True. Um, we hear about all of that from them. And we know that they are deceptive on a lot of things. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't trust them. Right. So okay. when you read the Quran, it says, it says uh, Allah indeed chose Adam, knowing the family Abraham, the family Imran above the nations, offspring one from another. Right. And then you see right there, we read it uh, last time, uh, than the um, Ikra, right? When uh, Surah 2, Ayah 40, right? In the 41. Now, memory said, and do not be the first a while to reject the command, right? Right. Well, we know that the prophets first go to who? Um, I was first going to Benny, 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 Benny Israel. Israel. Right. They first go to their own people. I mean, yeah, so no, how, people, people. I'm sorry, their own people, yeah. Oh, go ahead, brother. No, their own people, yes. Right. So they first go to their own people. You know, um, I, I no hardly no one ever really caught that when he said, and do not be the first to reject the message. Right. How can they be the first to reject the message if he didn't go to them first? Right, yeah, he, he, he's like, all throughout the Quran, he's talking to the children of Israel a lot. <laughs> right, and mo yeah. majority of the Quran is that. Yeah, the majority, yeah. You can go through the names of the surahs. And that's pretty deep. Can you go, can, can we go back to that chapter, what? that verse? I'm trying to wrap my <laughs> mind around what you just said. Yeah, surah 2, uh, you're talking about surah 2, ayah 40, 41? Surah 2, ayah 40, 41. Yeah. Can we pull it up or you got it? Yeah, can you pull it up? All right, tell me, let me see, let me see, let me see. Tell me where it's at, two. So two, I have 40, 41. 40, 41, let me see. Let me see, you got to understand, when they sit there and, there's a lot of deviancy going on because when they sit there and make them just only Ishmael, that gives them the ground to create their false religions. Mm. See, if you say all the books came from Israel, right? Right. Even even when we were in our captivity, even if we we're spreading and migrating around and we have prophets raised up among us. Then if you say we had all these different books, even after the time of the Torah, even after the time of Jeremiah, you know, saying all the other prophets. Right. After the time of Isa. Right. Right. Then what happens is you don't get many different religions. You get one house with many books. Right. You know, right. but. OK, yeah, so. You got it? Can you see it? Yep. I actually see it. Okay, so I, I this whole time I've been clicking on the wrong thing. I see it now. You can see you say you can see my you go read it? Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. Hold up. Uh sort of part. 
Okay, so Yah Ben Israel, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, in the Shaitan regime. It says, O children of Israel, remember my blessings which I bestowed upon you and fulfill your pledge to me, and I will fulfill my pledge to you and fear me, and believe in what I and what I revealed, confirming what is with you. And do not be the first. And the Arabic word right there is awal, which means mm -hmm. the beginning or the first to deny it and do not exchange my revelations for a small price and be conscious of me. And do not mix truth with falsehood and do not conceal the truth while you know. Mm. So we see right there is 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 letting it be known that, you know, uh it's telling them don't be the first to reject this. Right. Now yeah. whether that's the whole Quran, I'm not gonna say that because you know he, he had uh the Quran revealed in stages by stages. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, somebody could probably try to argue and say, well, you know what? He could have taken another portion of crown to somebody else at first, you know, and then bring this part when it was revealed to them. You know, they, a person could try to argue like that. Right. But mm -hmm. from what we read him right here, we see that he's letting them know, do not be the first to reject out of the message. Right. Right. So that means then by way of what we're looking at for the main part, we could say that yeah, he probably went to them first. Right. See? So um, that's just something that, that I noticed about that. That's deep. Yeah, when you, when you sit back and you look at it, and I looked up the, you know, the Arabic to it, and um, I said, huh, okay. So he went there. No wonder it got so many surahs about uh, addressing Bani Israel. But we also know he has, he has to address the Gentiles around, right? So that's right. where the Isaiah, the, yeah, he says, the, that's where the Isaiah 42 coming at. Right. Because he grew up around that area, you know? Yeah. But yeah, if you, um, one day, I don't know, you go in there, uh, study the thing, inshallah, where uh, the migration of children of Israel into Yemen, Southern Arabia, and then um, y'all could just look this up, the migration of children of Israel into uh, Yemen, and then uh, that's Southern Arabia. And then when the Dam of Sheba broke and the Quran mentions the incident, mm. then uh, look up other things where they said that they, when they fled, when the Bani Israel fled and others fled into Northern Arabia when the dam broke. And this is where the, the, the migration coming from the Yemen propped up in Northern Arabia. So right. the Limbas, right? The Limbas got the same story. Right, exactly. Yeah. because. Because a lot, a lot of us, are see, some of us, are, uh, like when we go outside the scripture and we give the names that we formed it to, like some of us are Mendi Israelites and some of us are Bantu Congo Israelites. Because right, right, right. when we, when we ran, when we ran out of, uh, you know, Jerusalem and, and those places, uh, we split. So we started running to the center of, uh, we ran into, up into Egypt and then we split from there and kept going into the Congo. And later on, the kingdom of Congo would be established yeah. over that way. Or we, some of us split and went the other way, and we ended up running into Yemen and stayed mm. there for a while. Right. You know, and then end up going down North, North Arabia. And this is the part that I try to uh, sometimes correct, uh, connect and correct is that Prophet Muhammad was an Israelite Arab. He had, he had uh, seen Ishmaelite blood in his family lineage because there was mixture there. You know, um, the fifth century in Arabia, North Arabia was really high. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it was really tragic. Like it was a lot of wars going on over there. It was popping off. You had the, uh, the uh, Abyssinians. They was in Arabia in the fifth century. I think that was the time of the Demotic, Demotic uh, Empire. And then after that came the Aksumites from Ethiopia because Ethiopia used a rule over Yemen, Southern Arabia. Right. Even in the movie, The Message. Y'all remember the movie, The Message? Right. Anybody see that movie? Remember when um when they was fleeing from Quraysh, they was running and they migrated and they went into Ethiopia. And the king of Ethiopia was like, if there is a disturbance in Arabia, why am I not informed? Right. <laughs> no, <we're, laughs> I, I, I used to wonder about that when I first saw that movie. So I was like, OK, hey, why would they why would the king of Ethiopia. Uh not make it seem like he mandatorily had to be informed about a disturbance in Arabia. 
that never went seen. And why did they run straight to Arabia? Why not anywhere else? I mean, straight into Ethiopia. Because we know our brothers, the Danites, they ran into, they was uh, the uh, Bete Israel over there. You know, they, well, they call it Ethiopians, but they're not really Ethiopians there, but they from basic stock, you know, um, but they're better Israel over there in Ethiopia, Abyssinia. Hmm. Of the tribe of Dan. So you got the Lim Limbas, who was the, the Limbas who went towards further down into the Congo, you know what I'm saying, past, you know, they became they they became known, we know them as the Levites. So you got Danites, Levites, you got Ephraim that went up into the kingdom of Congo that settled in Angola, and then you got Judites that or Yahuda that settled uh right next to Angola. Hmm. Right well, next, I mean, to, well, 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 right next to Angola. Is, is it that like next to Angola? Is it that like Gabon? Is it that like um, Cameroon? Yeah, some well, Cameroon there. Uh, Cameroon, Cameroon is more yeah, towards more towards west. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah. Um, well, 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 um, what do you know about the the Hausa connection? That their oral tradition talks about them coming from Iraq. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I was see. I know. Yeah, there. Hmm. What was that? Shua. You you mentioned the Shua Arabs. <laughs> I, I saw that. Yeah, I just yeah. I just came up on that one. Yeah. That that joint was fire that you did, brother. Yeah, Shua. Like, Shua Arabs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. About the Arab thing, I just came up on that joint. I was like, I say that brother put a good work right here. Yeah, Shua Arabs. Yep. I mean, listen. I I literally I, um. I messaged one of them. They got like a Facebook, and I asked. I said, "Do y'all come from Katora?" And they said, "Yes." Right. I asked. Them. They said, "Yes." They know it. They know where they come from. Yeah. I'm like, wow. They know the Ishmaelites. Yeah. Yes, indeed. That's like. Uh, let's see. Who was it? You said the Hausa. I think yeah. the Hausa. Well, because when I did a, uh, I did a little bit of history on the Hausa, and one thing um about the Hausa is. A lot of people think that they was like just one solid ethnic group. And in actuality, Hausa was a collaboration of different ethnic groups, different tribes in Africa. Wow. Yeah. There actually was at first. And unfortunately, it's, it's, you, know, you got to be real with it. When you're talking the truth, you got to speak the truth. Fortunately, you know what I'm saying? Some of them was part of the Swahili slave trade. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? And, and they, they, you know, they committed the slave trade and snatching Bantus up in the slavery. Yeah, now, Imagine now, the life of the slavery. I talked to an Igbo Nigerian, and mm -hmm. like he's an older, older, older guy. And um, he told me his family history, and he said that like his tribe, that they were like everybody was snatching everybody. Like it was like people were so hungry, they were kind of selling mm -hmm. their children for food. He said oh, even yeah. the Igbos was was they were just everybody was taking everybody's children like every all yeah. like all the tribes was like in like in on it like they were, yeah. they, were they were selling each other to each other. And That's right. That's the same. Because he, he said because they were so hungry. He said it was hungry. Mm -hmm. It was like a famine or something, and that's why they did it. Just like mm -hmm. if you give your child up for adoption. Uh huh. Go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Uh. Some Israelites did sell some Israelites. That's even in the Quran. You know, where exactly in the Quran, I forget exactly, but even the Quran it mentions that um I think it's Surah 17. I think it's in Surah 17 where uh where one part where Allah's telling them, you know, some of them he says, some you slayed and some you took captive, although it was not even permissible for you to do that. Right. Right? So def definitely uh even internal tribal you know people sold the other out too you know yeah. um now that doesn't negate because i see i i hear people when they talk on these subjects they be trying to like um either let the european either my uh, uh gentile whatever you want to call it, off the hook or they try to let the either my arab off the hook or they try to let we ain't let nobody off the hook they all were wrong. They all <laughs> the fact of the matter is the, it, it is a transgression to go up in somebody's land and to snatch them up and to, and put them in servitude and slavery when your God is only one. Right. It's just that simple. You know, so um, but definitely, you know, uh some some people think, you know, some people say that some of the house are Israelites too. 
you know? Right. And some say, no, they're not his light. So I don't, I don't know about that. I just know that um, transgressions all the way around. Yeah, they say they come from Iraq. That's where our leading was at, right? From Iraq? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of African tribes right. that used to be in the Middle East, the so-called Middle East. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm raised in Northeast Africa. Yeah. That's like when you go into uh <laughs> you go to the book of Jubilees or the book of Jasher. I'll look that up again. But there's a group of Edomites who use to uh, uh, be called African too. Mm -hmm. You know? I believe, I mean, that's, that, that's believable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when reparations come around, it's going to be, be repaired all the way around. It's not just going to be no one-sided reparation. Right. Exactly. But if y'all um y'all are finished, I'm I'm done, man. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Shut it down. I appreciate yeah. y'all for coming I'm through. Done. And I'm hoping that was a pretty good lesson. You know, go back, look, look at it, observe it, look it up for y'all for yourselves. And um Monday we're gonna do another reading. Okay, okay. Do another reading for Monday. Have a Yemeni connection. Okay. What's a good um What's a good time? Last time I did it. What's a good time? Last time I did it for two o'clock. Oh, uh, you what's know what? We uh uh brother, I, I don't know. I think we met. Uh, there's some in the chat and miss. Oh, no, no. Oh, I, yeah. I, the hops, it, some people. Says, I put it. I put it up. Which one did okay. I miss? I believe the covenant Mr. Rashid Khalif was talking about was the covenant promise from Al Mutali to protect the Quran. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, I addressed him. I, I told him mm -hmm. I told him that um he actually he wrote that he was the messenger of the covenant in the book of Malachi. Mm. Yeah, that's, wow. that's that's the Israelite. Ooh. Mm. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, somebody else said Hadrami Jews of Yemen are said to be closest to original stock Israelites and they have maternal African DNA. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's all the way around. Israelite blood is all the way around fulfilling the prophecy. We'll become a you know a great nation. We'll be scattered. Uh, our numbers will be numbered as the number of the star. Mm -hmm. And it's, a lot of people don't see the revival is happening on all different levels everywhere. They just don't see it. Yeah, even exactly. even with even with us talking right now, I mean, look what we talking about. We talking about Quran and Torah, yeah, <laughs> and the other right. books. No one, you know, what I'm saying people usually don't link all that together. That's right. You know, they they stuck into the different religions. Yeah, fighting. Um, um, it. Are they they fighting. What you say? They fight against it? No, they fighting against each other. Oh one yeah. Person. Torah over here, the other person got a Quran, they think they better. Yeah. They're in six. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Then which yeah, is not yeah, that, that's a thing. Like if you're Christian and you got half of the Bible and then you're a Torah, you got half of the Bible, you got the Quran over here. That's that's a sick. Right. Yeah. Larger sick. Yeah. Yeah. What you about to say, no? Oh no, I was just reading what, what uh, brother Kwame said. I believe the covenant Mr. Rashad Khalifa was talking about was the covenant promise from Al Mutali to protect the Quran. I mean, well, I'm saying he should have he should have said that in his writing. Yeah. But anyway, whatever. Well, <laughs> yes, Mr. Rashid, that's a good question. Book of Revelations. On the books of the prophets like Jeremiah, Daniel, uh, Zechariah, Ezekiel, all those are good books. Amos, Hosea, the Torah. You got the Torah in there? Yeah, the Torah. Yeah. That's all I can think of off the top of my head. All right, all right. The 
Alhamdulillah. Right, I'm going to shut it down, y'all. Yes, indeed. All right, brothers, sisters. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa wa barakatuh. All right, let me make my final remarks. All right, final remarks. Um, all right, so next week is the Feast of Tabernacle. Feast of Tabernacle. It is also the Feast of Booths or Tents, where you need to have your tent ready. You need to be on your porch or you need to be outside your backyard or wherever you need to be, on your roof or whatever. All right, for seven days, it starts Monday. Monday, we're going to have a holy um, mikra. Uh, no, what's a good time? We're going to do that at 2 o'clock. Um, then or time. we can act, or or um, we can even do it earlier than that, you know, since um, you know, folks are off that day, on that day 10 o'clock, uh, about uh, 11 12. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't care about views and nothing like that. I just I'm I'm just want us to fulfill it and get it done. I don't care if we get two views, <laughs> I don't really care. Right. So, whenever. So okay. you say about 11 o'clock is good? Did you say 11? You said 11, 10, 11, 12, which one? 11 o'clock is good. All right, we're doing 11 a.m. We'll run it for 30 minutes. 30 minutes is good? Inshallah. Oh, 30 minutes, 45. Quran and Bible. Okay, all right. I want to expand my library. I only have the Quran and Bible. Okay, good, good, good. You need to get the book of Enoch. You need to get the book of Jubilee. And um, you can get these books online for free. Just type in Jubilee. Type it in Google. Jubilee. Read online. What else? What else? What else? You can get the book of Enoch for free, too. Online. But if you want a hard copy... All right, thank you. Um, make sure make sure you all subscribe. Right, every Sabbath we're gonna do this every Sabbath, and we got a reading Monday. We should be in those booths from the fourth through the tenth, and then in the eleventh we're gonna have another reading. All right, so the reading the mikra is where we come together for about 30, 45 minutes, and you pull out a scripture and. You read whatever you want to read from the Quran, from the Book of Jubilee, whatever. Um, if you don't want to read, just come and listen. If you do want to read, you can come up here and you can read your. If you want to just read one ayat, if you want to just read one little line, it's all good. We have our reading, our mikra. All right, holy convocation at the beginning. Yeah. Of the, the challenge right. is on, Benny Israel. They fulfill these covenants. Challenge yeah, we'll is on. Here we go. Let's do it next week. Inshallah. Feast yeah. of the dwelling in booths. All right. I'm done. All right. Hope everybody have a good day. I will see you Monday. Monday at 11 a.m. Make sure you join the Facebook group. I'll put it in the um, I'll put it in the in the um, section at the bottom and make sure you subscribe see you later have a good day